I want to quickly touch upon the hypocrisy that exists within some of these stand-up comedians and how they respond to criticism, in my opinion, and how they don't seem to like when the fans online, because I still, maybe I'm in the minority here, but I think as much as we like to rag on Brendan and laugh at him and stuff, and Brian Callen and the Fire and the Kid crew and the people around them and that whole LA podcasting um, extended universe people, I still think fundamentally we're kind of fans because we see stuff, right? Like myself, I'm watching clips. You guys are sitting here watching me watch the clips. You may be watching your own stuff. We're still consuming their content. So as much as we laugh at them, we're still in some ways fans of them. What I find really irritating is that they can't seem to handle when fans don't just suck their dicks and gargle their fucking nuts in their hands or juggle their nuts in their hands. They can't seem to hack it. They hate it. So if you don't suck them off, but then you maybe point out things that they're doing wrong or you criticize their podcast or you maybe push back on a point they made or you don't like their jokes or they think they're annoying, they immediately, immediately start getting pissy and start getting their knickers in a twist. Do you know what I mean? They don't like it. Like a good example is Eric Griffin. He seems he's a good example of it. You give him all the praise in the world, he loves it. You point out a couple of things, he starts going on these diatribes and starts ranting and getting all hysterical and shit. Like, really bizarre how these guys are. They don't seem to like any kind of negative feedback from the fans. They just want you to buy your ticket, sit there and laugh like Brendan. Ah, 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 ah. Like, do that fake fucking shit laugh. Buy their merch at, and what else and watch all their videos and rack up their views and allow them to live in mansions and shit and drive expensive cars and live their amazing lives. But they don't want they, they don't want you to have the freedom of opinion to say what you want. If you do say what you want, they deem you to be a hater and a detractor. In Brendan's case, they try and sue you and shit. It's all fucking bullshit. But the hypocrisy for me is that these comedians, they actually act the same way we act. Because in the fucking fallout of all the stuff that happened with Brendan and Kalila and Bobby Lee, it's pretty clear which comedians picked which side. And most of the comedians who have a back, who have some sort of morals and principles and stuff, they obviously sided with Bobby Lee because fundamentally Brendan shouldn't be fucking sliding in Kyla's DMs. That's fucking gross, right? You shouldn't be trying to fuck your your friend's girl unless she wants to fuck you, of course, right? But generally, you shouldn't be doing that. And then, of course, the stuff that happened with Annie was super horrible too. Then trying to sue them, like all this nonsense is fucking bizarre. So they've all they've all obviously picked sides, but then in front of the camera, they try and lecture us. And tell us that we're lame, we're not the ones that do it, we're doing too much, trolls, all this sort of stuff. It's really annoying because your 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 actions are actually aligning more with us than what you're actually saying, which is probably the you know the standard definition of a stand-up comedian, isn't it? They're always fucking full of shit. The same one thing, always doing the other thing. But I thought this clip from I thought this clip from No Jumper was really interesting. It features Andrew Schultz sitting down with the No Jumper crew. Um, obviously promoing his um his his um his comedy special and they asked him about Brendan Schaub and he and the answer he gives is a little bit irritating because it, he makes it seem as if he makes it seem as if there's no justification at all for the abuse and the hatred that some people have towards Brendan online, which I don't understand. Because I think if you're a friend of Brendan, you should be able to say, Hey, the guy that I know personally, I'm a big fan of. I, l- I love him as a person. I know people don't see him like that. They just see what I see online. But the guy that I know is a good guy, and that's it. But this idea that there is no justifiable reason why anybody would want to see Dundon squirm, or they don't like to see him win, or they just like to laugh at his L's, or whatever it may be, is insane. Because there's documented, there's like a whole list on, on that subreddit like it's fucking pages pages long of links to all the messed up stuff he's done over the years that's that even predates all this stuff's happening now right that shows that he may not be the most pleasant of guys but yet for some reason these guys don't aren't aren't capable of just admitting yeah he might be a dick to you guys online but to me personally i find him nice but i find this comment from schultz a little bit annoying but i also understand it but then his actions prove to be the contrary let's continue We've so far we've talked about gang shootings, we've talked about abortion. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about something that is perhaps even more disturbing. Okay. Gringo Poppy. You and I You want some clips. You boy. and I are both friends. Of, YouTube what the fuck is that? We will explain. Is that? He and I are both friends of Brendan Shaw. Yeah, shouts to Brendan. For, former Love UFC you, Brendan. fighter, current comedian and podcaster. 
I know you see it. People, for some reason, they want anyone associated with Brendan Schaub to speak out against him because they don't like his comedy special. What, the, what you, is who your is attitude? They, who on is they to you? The redditors. Yes, he has a he has a Reddit page that is like is is massive. And it will make you scared to have a Reddit. Yeah, and, <laughs> and it's like dedicated to uh, yeah, just shitting on him. And right. it's it's really unfortunate because like we got one too now. Do you guys have the? Yeah, it's pretty malicious. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting thing because Reddit is fascinating and fucking hilarious and like they're abs like creative people on there and basically what it is is it's like your reddit page is giving thousands of people that might not have their own instagram or twitter that's popping yeah. access to a group instagram that's popping that's what a reddit page is right so now they have access to fifty thousand people or whatever it is and if they put something out that slaps it gets views and it gets reactions and all of a sudden you get to almost feel like you're popping because yeah. your content is crushing. So you're going to keep on leaning into that. So it incentivizes them to be as mean as possible, as possible because yeah. that's... Nah, 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 nah. I don't like this narrative, bro. I'm on Reddit all the time. I'm on Reddit all the fucking time. There's plenty of subreddits, plenty of subreddits, especially centered around podcasts. One example is the one that I watch called um, New Rory and More. For the most part, that subreddit is pretty positive towards the host and what they're doing and pretty encouraging about them. There's some posts people put up like, oh, I'm just appreciating Rory today for all the work he's done. I love the growth. Appreciate him more for being outgoing. Like, There's loads of communities or subreddits on there that are geared around a particular content creator or individual where most of the reception and most of the conversation around them is quite positive. I generally do think most people online, content creators especially, most of the negative vitriol that comes towards them is usually because of what they put out. A good example being Dark Side Phil and Wings of Redemption. The reason why Dark Side Phil and Wings of Redemption have armies of trolls and detractors who are dedicated to absolutely destroying their lives online is because they've been pretty reprehensible online and people have never forgiven them for the things that they've done back in the day or they continue to do that they, they didn't like. From DSP begging on streams to Wings of Redemption saying crazy shit when you should be on P PKA. But it all comes from their own actions. That's what kind of determines the reaction of the fans. The Fire and the Kids subreddit is no different. I was on that subreddit when I used to like the show. When I used to like the show, back in the day on Fox, that subreddit was kind of 50-50. There were fans on there that kind of sussed Brendan out. And there were fans on there who were basically still fans. This was, this was around the, the time when Special K and Evan the Beard were working on, on the fight and the kid. And I was on that subreddit and it was pretty balanced. The moment it started to go a little bit left, in my opinion, is when Brendan started to become more of his own person. He started to not rely on Brian anymore. He started to do his own shows. He started to make his own merch. He was doing all the stuff on E. He started to dye his hair. Do you know what I mean? He started to kind of get into his own thing. Like he was kind of becoming a bit of a Hollywood fixture. He started to go on Rogan a lot more on his own. That's when he started to, his, his head for some, again, I don't know if it's ego, maybe he just started to really feel himself, right? Because if you know his story, you know that he was always kind of like the 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 last guy that was always picked, right? Um, at anything in sports, whatever it may be, he was never ever successful. So maybe he finally found success in this one thing, and maybe in his head he was like justified, like yeah, this is where I fucking should be. This is where I actually should be. And from then on, it never it never kind of got right again. But again, it came from his actions. This idea that the the the, the forum is just toxic fundamentally. Or f it was toxic for the day dot is not true because it started off as a fan forum. Then the, the host of the show turned into cunts. And then, of course, the, the, the kind of the forum reflected it, in my opinion. That's what I think. That rises to the top yeah, is the shit that's the cruelest. Exactly. And then you guys, you got to be good at like making sure like or like the mods, I guess, have to be good at making sure that the page is healthy. Because at the end of the day, like you don't want that page to take away from the content. And I right. think that's unfortunately what's happening with the fight on the kid. Like they have a fucking great podcast. Like they're hilarious together. Like right. Brian and Brendan are fucking hilarious. No, they don't. Don't they don't have a great podcast. If they did have a great podcast, why didn't you go in it? That's what I mean. They just they just chat their ass. Why didn't you make the effort to go on the Fire and the Kids podcast if it's such a good podcast? If it's so good and they're so funny and they're so hilarious, why didn't you go on the show to promote your special? Full of shit. Absolutely full of shit. Oh, scheduling. I was too busy. Get out of here, man. You made the effort for everybody else because you know how much you could add to your promo. You can add to the awareness, get eyes on you. But why didn't you go on their podcast if it was that good? 
And that's how I know he's lying because we can all you can you can say Brendan's funny, you can think Brian's funny, you can think I chat shit, say what you want to say. But I think even a a, a ardent, a hardcore Fire in the Kid fan, there's no way a Fire in the Kid fan now can tell us that the Fire in the Kid podcast now is better than it was before. It's worse. We all know it's worse because of the stuff they've gone through in life. You know, Br- Brian Callum's basically a shell of a man because he essentially was on the brink of losing everything when he got accused of that rape thing he got accused of and stuff. Do you know what I mean? He's been through hell in his career. He's essentially been cancelled from Hollywood. You know, the one thing that he actually wanted in life was to be an actor and he can't do it anymore. Not on the level that he wants to do it anyway, unless he does stuff with, um, you know, um, The Daily Wire with fucking um, Ben Shapiro and stuff. But he's never going to become a Hollywood actor again. Br- Brennan Shaw's one of the most hated people online that's ever existed. So clearly the energy has been, you know what I mean? And obviously the drama they've had with hosts and stuff like that show is a completely shell of itself. It's completely crumbled. There's, it's actually a credit to them that they still can turn up every day and do that show. It really is. Because you see some of the clips and it's like, God almighty, man. It's like watching paint dry is so boring compared to how it used to be. And again, I was a fan. That show used to be super funny. I'd never missed the episode. Right, they'd have fucking um, Brian's bit at the end, dropping knowledge that was fucking hilarious. How he always got stuff wrong, and he clearly didn't do any research beforehand. They would have their little arguments they'd be having on there. They're trying to make each other laugh. They'll do all those songs. Remember the Big Dick Bandit song they did? Like there'll be really funny mit- bits about it. Really funny bits about it, but it's turned into absolute shit. So to say that it's funny and it's a great show when you don't go in it yourself, and also when you know, we can actually say without prejudice, no, without bias or anything, that that show is fundamentally worse than what was prior. I told you you're lying. I told you to try that else. Together. And, uh, and Brent is like a really great dude. He's a, he's a genuinely sweet dude who helps people. He's the reason I got on Rogan. Like, he was like, yo, you got to get this guy on. This is before anybody was fucking looking at my shit. Like, mm. and that really changed my life. So. Oh, and, and just words to the wise. Schultz's appearance on Rogan, the first one, might be one of the best first appearances on Joe Rogan that's ever gone down, especially from somebody that wanted to kind of get their career started. Yeah, let's say from stand-up comedian. The best first appearance I've ever seen. He came He came with a fire. He came ready to make Joe laugh, you know, surprise him with some facts or his perception of things and maybe try to build some sort of friendship out of it. He really smashed it. That was one of the best performances or best podcast appearances I've seen in a long time. He really came with it. It was really fucking good. Charles' first appearance with Joe Rogan. I definitely agree. You should check it out. So again, which is also bad because Brendan is the one that brought him in and he didn't have time to even stop by these podcasts. Bit shitty. He's actually a great dude. And... um and he's just getting destroyed by that thing. I told him to lean into it. I was like, bro, you got to sell merch. Like anything that they do about you, you got to lean in. And then I thought that they would appreciate that in one way. They're like, oh, okay, he's not ignoring and acting like this thing isn't happening. This is, he's like taking part of this thing. His Reddit is so fucked up that like they've made it their mission to expose him cheating. That's that's where it's like, yo, you go into the personal life. That's, that's. Okay, okay, okay. First of all, the leaning, the leaning into the Reddit thing is too late. It's too late. People on Reddit were saying this from day dot. When it started to get really toxic, people on Reddit were saying he needs to lean into this stuff in some ways to kind of take the steam out of it because it's toxic, it's getting mean, and people are clearly like, people clearly dislike him. It's not like they're saying, yo, his comedy sucks. They actually hate him as a person. So now you have to kind of pivot and lean into it a little bit just to kind of take the sting away from it because it's getting a little bit too spicy, a little bit too tingly. He refused. Because guess what? He was on Joe Rogan all the time. He had Showtime sponsorship. He was up. He was up. He was swinging, swinging his dick in the air, feeling confident, feeling nice. Now, the moment things had to crumble and things had to go bad, he had to lose Showtime sponsorship. And obviously, it looks like Joe Rogan kind of gave me the cold shoulder, whatever it may be there. Stuff happened with Brian Cannon, his allegations. Then suddenly he turned into man putting his hands on his chest and saying that things get to him and all this sort of emotion, whatever. But for a long time, he thought he was above the, the Reddit because basically they're homeless cats, people that he doesn't necessarily um, respect in any way, shape or form, homeless people and cats. So clearly he didn't have any reason to lean into it because he didn't think their, their opinion mattered. But now it's got to the point where the opinion of that subreddit is reflective of most people. It's not even like a fringe community. Most people that watch his content and watch his stand-up special and and watch what he and listen to what he has, has to say, they all come they all come to the same conclusion that he's 
redacted and now he's not funny. So it's not, you know what I mean? So that now he has no choice but to kind of acknowledge it, but it's too late now. This point he's about to make about the cheating stuff, I also got a point to make about this, but I'll let it play. That's wild, man. That's but are they, so they're like that deep into his life where there's people probably following him around. Yeah, like, like security cam yeah, footage and shit, it, right? It's different, what it's different fuck, when man? you have a... Okay, now, I hate this comment too because Schultz is being very disingenuous here. No one in that subreddit is trying to uncover Brendan cheating. No one is. No one. What Brendan did was redacted stuff and dumb stuff, especially in the beginning, hitting up all these random girls online. And I don't know when that time was, but there was a period where he was hitting up random girls on Instagram. And those girls on Instagram were the ones that screenshotted the pictures and shit and then sent them to people on the subreddit or some of them uploaded them themselves to the subreddit. The most recent occasion with that live stream thing of the when he was doing for the Super Bowl with Mike Tyson, Donald, uh, sorry, um, Daniel Cormier and, and a few other NFL guys who I don't remember the names of, that was his own fault. They're live streaming from this amazing mansion somewhere in LA, right? They're, they're doing a live stream for the Super Bowl. They've got all these amazing ex-athletes on the bent, on the couch talking about what they're seeing on the screen, interacting with the, with the crowd, doing fun games and shit. Then they have an intermission, like a break, I guess, when they're playing American football. And the camera, they've got like a, I guess, they've got a drone outside, right? Recording the goings on on this mansion because it's, it's basically open because you can see everybody inside and shit. Brendan is such a doof or is so unlucky that the same moment the camera is panning around the mansion and checking everything out, it picks up Brendan in the kitchen walking across to some lady sitting down on a couch and he passes her a note and does some like cute little sassy move or something. And then she gets in, she's like period and talking to her friends and shit. That's how people were able to suss that. Cause it was live streamed on fucking YouTube. No one dug that up. No one went on the fucking, no one hacked into the mansion's fucking CCTV mainframe and shit and dug that up. It was being live streamed on YouTube. And Brendan basically from what we saw allegedly was cheating right on our screen. So of course they fucking put the fucking thing up on you on, on, on the subreddit. Why wouldn't they put it up on there? No one's digging for it. And even myself, I'm not going to be that guy because I, I never on this stream, when I talk about his family or his kids and shit, I, I, I keep out of that stuff. I just keep, I was concentrating on the content he kind of puts out there. I don't even try and dive too deep and find out other things. But I've made a promise not to dig into that. And even myself, even me, even me, I've had more than, and I'm going to say this, Clearly, I've had more than five, five separate women DM me and tell me that they've had various DMs with the one BS or other people around that kind of crew concerning maybe hooking up back in the day. Five separate people have told me this, five of them. I could easily share those things. I could easily interview these people, whatever it may be, but I don't. So people are going, you're going, you're going on as if like people are digging for it. No one's digging for it. It's getting presented to people because everyone is so desperate, it looks like, to prove that even though Brendan tries to act like he's a good person, that clearly Benacini is not. Now, is it anyone's business that he's not a good person? It's, it's debatable. You know what I mean? I don't really know where I stand on that side of things. Like, should people be going way out of their way to really prove that, look, he's a scumbag. He doesn't even, he's not even loyal to his wife. Should he be going really that far? I'm not too sure. But let's not pretend like we're digging for this information. No one's digging for this information. It's freely available because this guy moves sloppy. Simple as that. Simple. Simple as that. He moves too sloppy, bruv. So I guess, so I, I, I really do think it's disgenuous how these guys act. They act as if like, they, they, they basically act as if like what we're looking at, like, like they act like we're the crazy ones. That's the thing I don't understand. It's like, at first they tried to convince us that he, he was funny. Then all the material of his came out and we got proof that he's not that funny. And now they're trying to convince us he's a good guy when there's all this content online and accounts from people and interactions he's had in the past that prove he's not... Just forget all the stuff I just said now. The mere fact that this man DM'd Kalila when she was dating Bobby Lee should be enough to tell you what kind of person he is. Do you know what I mean? That should be enough to, to, to kind of excommunicate you from all friendship groups. People should be like, no, nah, I'm not going to fuck with him. He's not trustworthy. That should be it. Done. But for some reason, people just pretend like it didn't happen. Continue. Like, it's just like, come on, man. Fuck off with this shit. Fuck off. 
What was in the chat? Oh, look at the chat. I saw a question mark. Big up Ariel. Big up the C big up the real CEO. The real CEO. Big up Ariel in the chat. Wow, amazing. What's up, Ariel? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Really, um, nice to hear that you're here on the show, checking it out. I really do appreciate it. Big up, Ariel. You are the king. You are the CEO. And um, I do appreciate. You know, also I'm gonna say I do appreciate Ariel's professionalism when it came to dealing with Brendan because I do think there was an opportunity to get lost in the weeds and to get a little bit too personal and to somehow lose your eye on things do you know what I mean but he kept it professional he kept it very clinical he kept it very surgical to lend a push a tea term you know destroyed the guy with love and kept it moving and also, the funny thing about it, the funny thing, do you remember? Do you remember when a certain person was saying, oh, Ariel's not a good person to work with. He's, I've heard from the grapevine, difficult to work with, not really a good guy, blah, 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 blah. No one really likes him. People will think he's not doing well. Look at this, mate. Look at that. They think he's not doing well. Look at all this news on Google. Look at the Google news. Look at that. Eh? Ariel talks about returning to real sports after 19 years. Ariel will make HBO real. Look at this. Look at this announcement. It's, it's, it's really interesting. How are you able to secure deals with HBO if you're such a bad colleague? If people think that you're bad to work with and you're not a good teammate and you don't root for your colleagues and you don't, you know, try and lift up your fellow, um, you know, people working in your profession, whatever it may be, how are you able to secure all of these deals, eh? How is it possible? How is that possible? So a big up Ariel for absolutely smashing in that regard, coming in, not losing focus and getting the bag, the big bag. So yeah, big up Ariel for checking out the show. I really do appreciate you, friend. I really do appreciate you. Anyway, to continue and to end the point I was making, to continue and end the point, Schultz talks all that stuff about, oh, it's a good show. Brian and Brendan are such good friends together. They make a funny show, blah, blah, blah. Why didn't you promote your own comedy special on their show then? Because he posted up this little thing, this little graphic on his Instagram stories featuring all the shows he's been on during his press run. And look look what you can't see on there. No fire in the kid. He even went on fucking Whitney Cummings' fucking podcast, right? I can't imagine you fucking listen to that. You went on your mum's house. You went on uh, Flagrant. Oh, no, he had the girls on Flagrant on his show. Tim Dillon there. No Jumper. Bad Friends of Andrew Santino. Uh, I don't know who that is. Oh, that's a Chris, Christus DiStefano. He went on, he even went on Dave Portnoy's fucking podcast. Dave Portnoy's podcast. Right? KFC. Megan, Megan Kelly. Megan fucking Kelly's podcast. But he couldn't make time for the most funniest guys he knows. You're full of shit. You're all full of shit. Oh, God almighty. They're all so full of shit. It really is annoying, isn't it? But anyway, what can we do? I guess in some way, shape or form, we're all full of shit. I guess that's what I've realized doing this show. We are all full of shit in some ways. It's just some of us are more annoying with it. That's basically what it is. We're all full of shit in some ways, but some of us are more annoying.